Boom. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Insiders Elite. Uh, today we have a massive, massive topic that is front of mind for many businesses in the world, whether you're in the trades industry, restaurant industry, fruit picking industry, farming. It is a huge, huge topic uh, and one of the biggest challenges in business at the moment that is attracting and retaining talented staff, talented team members. Jamie, welcome. Definitely. Hey, great to catch up with you again, Mick. Another week, another Insiders Elite live show. And this one here, what's what's really cool about this is I was in one of the local Facebook groups. I was just taking a look around and one of the people, uh, they were having some real challenge, not just um, you know finding new people, but also retaining people. The way things, the way it used to be is no longer what works for people for keeping them on board and especially attracting those new people into the business. I did a little bit of looking at it, did some thoughts about it, and came up with 13 key things. Now, chances are we're not going to get through all 13 today, but it was 13 key areas, 13 key topics that came up that can really shift the game, that can really flip the script on doing, you know, versus what you've always done that same way where you weren't able to retain those people, but even more importantly, not give people a compelling reason as to why they want to be a part of your team, to totally flipping that around, to getting people excited, getting that uh, you know, proverbial lineup. What's it all about? It is ultimately about creating that internal raving fan culture. Absolutely, Jamie. And having that internal raving fan culture where not only is the team that you you have absolutely love being there, uh, but then they share that out. They talk about it. They promote that culture. They advertise that in their circles, which then in turn builds that people wanting to be a part of your business and look to start with you'll need to promote that internal raving fan culture but that is critical to attracting and retaining staff uh, team and it's just having that internal raving fan culture where everybody is a huge fan of the business and what's going on that's absolutely critical in the way the way you do business and how to have a, a great team Completely. And it's going to be, you know, everyone's going to hear about it. It's like, oh, hey, go work at ABC Corp because ABC Corp has all these amazing things. I mean, the first topic on the list, and, and this is going to be kind of interesting because wait a minute, Jamie, we're, we're talking about work. But one of the big things that I really believe is allowing that time to play. It's like, whoa, the, the two conflicting different ideas here. Look, I get it. We're here to work. We're here to get out there. We're here to make that biggest impact, serve our clients, you know, get production up, all that sort of stuff. But if work is seen, if work is that place where I'm going to, you know, sweat my bag off for eight, 10 hours a day, and all it is is just a place where I just go to, to crush, crush, crush to get things done, if there's no actual time for me to really enjoy what I'm doing, I'm going to build that resentment to that, to that environment there. Big suggestion here is how can your people, regardless of what it is, whether it is restaurant, whether it's whatever, what is it that makes it play? Now, I'm going to use Google as an example. Of course, we've seen the movies. We've most likely seen the movies, seen the little stuff there where, you know, they've got the ping pong tables. They've got the foosball tables. They've got the arcade. I'm not saying that you've got to bring in ping pong tables and arcade and all that, but what can really make it fun? What can really take that work environment and turn it into something that's amazing? Because trust me, two things are going to happen. Number one, people are going to want to be there. They're going to get excited to come into work. There's no question about that. But number two, and this might be the biggest thing here, your customers, your patrons are going to feel it. Even if they don't know what it is, even if they just go and say, man, something's different here. Something just feels good. It's like, I want to be here. I want to be a part of that. Mick, have you ever been in that place where you walked into a business, uh, you know, whatever it is, doesn't matter what the business is, but it just felt good. Like it felt warm. It felt welcoming. You could see that the smile on the employees' faces, on the team members' faces, it was a genuine smile. Have you ever felt that? Yeah, absolutely, Jamie. There's a number of businesses you're involved with and you're like, man, this place is cool. I just want to be here. Whether it's a cafe or, you mm -hmm. know, a hydraulic shop or, or even the accountants that you go to, you know, and even simple things as, having a quarterly theme or a six monthly theme and the business and the, and the team's excited. Oh, what are the new themes going to be when we come in and there's a bit of fun and a banter and you have a bit of, you know, there might be an army theme for six months and, you know, you set your goals and challenges for the business around that. And it's just, so there's something different and exciting and they're like, Oh, that's cool. What are the new theme going to be? And there's a bit of chatter and there's a bit of fun, excitement about it. You know, like I say, you don't need to have ping pong tables and huge big facilities, but something as simple as that can really make it fun at work and, and have have a few 
I suppose, ideas and games and things around whatever your theme is. Or like, there's so much that can be done just to make it that little bit more fun, or a little bit more play. So, you know, how can we have a bit more fun while we do this? What What's one thing we could change that would make it more fun than it is right now? You know, these don't have to be big, expensive things like Google having ping pong table and arcade centers and you know these are things on scale but it's the same principle that's probably that's the questions they've asked themselves how could they make this more fun yeah yeah so it's about come up with these audience, so. yeah and that's really it i mean when we're having fun we're not worried about oh my god i'm going to do the wrong thing or oh my gosh i'm going to get this you know customer's order wrong or something like that those things aren't happening we're going there to genuinely enjoy ourselves and here's the thing again it's it's a bit of a dichotomy there it's like wait jamie we need production we need all these things it's got to be about work 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 trust me when you make it fun when you make it enjoyable when you make it a place that people want to be you'll get more productivity, you'll get more work done, you'll get a lot more things done because people are wanting to be there. It, it it moves away from simply just collecting that paycheck and just, you know, putting in my, you know, my solid seven and a half, eight hours, nine hours, whatever it is, and then going home. It completely mm. changes that dynamic. Look for those opportunities. What is it could, that could make it more fun? If you're the business owner, if you're the business operator, you're on here, it's like, well, geez, there's no way that I could possibly make it fun. I would challenge you and I would say, what would happen if you asked? What would it, what would happen if you got your team together and said, "Look, team, there's no wrong answers here. First of all, I want to I want to preframe it and let you all know that there's no wrong answers. It's impossible to get this wrong. Secondly, if we could have more fun here, if we could just go have an absolute blast, what would make it more fun here? What would make it so much more enjoyable where you're wanting your friends to come work here? Ask the team. Right. Sometimes the suggestions are going to be outlandish. They might not exactly fit, but other times they might share things with you. It's like, you know what? We could implement something like that really simple. The idea of the theme, Mick, you know, you, you, you're talking about the theme and all that. We've got a theme for the way we're doing things. And, you know, maybe Fridays it's dressed like a pirate day or something. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. But really, when you are able to introduce more fun into that business, the business is going to thrive and it's going to begin to really create that culture, a culture unlike what's really out there right now. We need to do something different. We can't keep doing the same things over and over and over. We have to change things up. We have to come up with those new ideas, be willing and open to implement them, and then simply go and do and see what comes from that. Yeah, absolutely, Jamie, and and that's exactly right. And I know a lot of business owners right now are probably saying, yeah, yeah, we've got to spend money, make it fun for them. You know, they'll they'll lose track, they'll get distracted. It'll be all about the fun. It won't be about. That's where the second point comes in is having a strong purpose and mission, having yeah. that front of center, having it communicated through everything, have it communicated through the fun activity, through the theme. You know, have it related the theme. You know, like I said, an army theme but it's mm -hmm. about achieving the objective. So here's the objective. It's our mission and purpose. And here's yeah. where the army and the theme ties into it and the games that are related to it. And, you know, it's about having that strong mission and purpose. So when you do bring new t new team members in, that they know it's communicated to them. It's everywhere. They live and breathe the mission and purpose. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. in business is tied through and you're having that one single direction. It is absolutely probably the cornerstone. So you can have as much fun as you want as long as you're heading in the right direction and you're in line with your mission and purpose. Um, and, and that's where it's key to have that second part. What do you think, Jamie? Absolutely. And I want to play on this one a little bit because this is absolutely massive. And let's talk about restaurants. Let's let's really frame this up. Restaurants. And when we think purpose and mission behind a restaurant, what? It's just to feed people? I tell you what, if that's your purpose and if that's your mission, you're not going to succeed. Yeah, ultimately, one of the, I guess we could call it the byproducts of it is, yes, people are going to get fed. People are going to get filled up. They're going to come. They're going to eat. But what if it was something more? What if the purpose of that business was to create memorable experiences? Think about it. We don't necessarily remember gifts. We don't remember a lot of that stuff. Heck, I can't remember what I got at all for my birthday last year. But I'll tell you what. Two years ago, I had this absolutely amazing wine. And I remember we were sitting out on the porch. I was drinking it. I remember the flavor in my mouth. I remember the entire experience. What if the purpose of that business was really to create those everlasting memorable um, moments you know, for families, for, for couples, for individuals, for whatever it was? What if there was a bigger purpose and those team members 
could really get behind that so they can remember, hey, it's it's not just about, you know, getting people in and getting people out as quick as possible, right? And, and I don't want to get too far down here, but I've done that where maybe I've been in a food court in the mall or something like that. And unfortunately, it's really turned me off because like next, 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 they're, they're asking you next. You're the third person back in line. You're having to yell over two or three other people and they're getting frustrated with you because you're not telling them your order. That's not a great experience, right? Sure, that business may stay in business for a while, but what would happen if you made it personal, if you recognized what the real purpose of business was? I would challenge you, you know, Mick, you and I, we've, we've done tons and tons of training on purpose and on mission. I would challenge any business owner, any business operator right now, if you don't have that purpose, if you don't really truly understand that mission, and especially if you haven't shared it with your staff, with your team, if they're not all on that same page, my God, reach out to us, right? You're doing yourself, you're doing your business a disservice. When everyone understands what that purpose is, what that mission is, why the business exists, amazing, magical things are going to happen in that business. Yeah, absolutely, Jamie. And, and you talked about the restaurant. There's a a, a burger place in um, in New Zealand in mm-hmm. Christchurch, uh, not Christchurch, Queenstown. It's called Ferg Burger. It's probably all over New Zealand by now. Uh, if you're ever 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 there, go there. They are the best burgers I've ever tasted. However, if their mission was just to make the best burgers, they would make really good burgers, and people mm-hmm. would go there. I lined up for an hour and thirty minutes to get a burger. I'd heard these burgers are the best. It's such a great experience. And they did not disappoint. While I lined up for an hour and 30 minutes to get my burger by the time I'd ordered and got my burger, there was people coming up, checking on you in the line. How are you going? Here's the menu. Do you know what you want yet? Like they created an unbelievable experience. The line would have been 70 or 80 meters long to get into the shop to order. But the whole time there's people checking in on you, the experience that just in the atmosphere in there, there's people chatting, like it was unbelievable experience. And that's what it is about. Then I wish I could, I'm almost certain their mission is about creating amazing experiences for people. And it's not necessarily mm-hmm. about making good burgers. Yeah. yeah. Because they also do pies. They also got a bakery now. They also have all this other stuff. So that it's not about the food. It's about the experience or what they're trying to create. And that's having a strong mission and purpose. And everyone knows whatever it is, your mission and purpose is, this that's what it is and that's what's important how you deliver that can be through fun or it can be through sometimes it might be through that hustle and grind you need to get some stuff done but you can also incorporate that fun and those other aspects that we're talking about to make an internal raving fan culture and it's key to have that really strong mission and purpose that integrates with your whole team and they know you should be able to ask anyone on your team at any time and they should be able to recite the mission and purpose absolutely no question um Having that really lets us know why we're there. Most people, it's there to collect a paycheck, right? Collecting a paycheck is not a purpose. Collecting a paycheck is not a mission. And I get it. Sometimes that paycheck's there to pay our mortgage, to pay, you know, to pay rent, to pay the bills, to do all those sort of things. That's only going to get you so far. When there is a true greater purpose behind it, when you can come together collectively under that one purpose, under that one mission, guess what? We get our human need of connection met. Mm. I get my human need of significance met. Look, big human, big, big, big. There's six, six human needs, but really number one connection. When we're all working Mm. under that same purpose and under that same mission, I'm connecting with my other teammates. I'm connecting with my customers, my clients, uh, even the prospective clients that are coming in that. And here's the big thing. When we create that, if you're in a service and sales type type industry, guess what? People are going to be coming to you. It's going to make your job as a salesperson actually easier. Purpose mission does that. Purpose mission does that because now instead of you chasing people down, right? Those people are going to be chasing you down. It literally flips that script over, which is just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And having that strong mission and purpose, it should be communicated often, which takes us to our third point, like constantly communicating with your team about the flow of information about where you're going, what's happening in the business, how you're tracking against your mission and purpose, what's going on, um, you know, keep them informed about what's changing in the direction of the business and where you're heading and what's coming up and what exciting things are happening and what challenges you're facing. And you'll be surprised when this flow of communication is open and often 
your team will come up with ideas to help solve your challenges before you've even thought of them. They say, hey, you know, we're having that that challenge or that issue with A, B and C. What about if we tried this? Like, what a brilliant idea. Let's roll that out. You know, and then they take charge of that and they get excited about how to improve it. I'm sure we've all been a part of a team somewhere in our career. I hope you have because I hope you've experienced this where people are volunteering ideas to help fix challenges and things and you bring them up and and everyone's excited about it and they take charge about implementing a, a new process or a new challenge or a new something or other to help solve a customer problem or you know come up with a new product that fixes a problem like we've all been a part of a business like that and it was exciting because people mm-hmm. were wanting to make things better and when you create an environment like that that's the that's the consequence of having that open communication about the direction and where we're heading and what your mission and purpose is and what things are what challenges you're facing it's it's a fantastic environment to be a part of and that adds to that raving fan internal culture yeah you you, you nailed it there Mick. communication 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 it is the key i've worked in those industries and those businesses and when i first started out one of my first jobs i worked in this uh, automotive machine shop we used to rebuild engines and stuff like that and it was a very old antiquated way of doing business you know uh go do this why because i told you to right you want to talk about demotivation there was absolutely no motivation there whatsoever. And what it actually did is it set up within me. I remember, and I was a young fellow at the time. I was, what was I, maybe 19 years old or something like that. One of my first jobs, 18 years old or something, one of my first real jobs. And, and I operated out of that place of fear. I didn't want to be there. But guess what? It was paying the bills. It was paying my rent. It was doing those things. We didn't have that open, honest communication. And I'm going to tell you what, it sucked. It was a difficult thing. I still remember it to this day. I still come back to that place this day. And what was interesting is I ended up leaving that company. I ended up leaving that company. I went to actually work for a a General Motors Chevrolet dealership. And what was really interesting when I left, which is totally up to this point here, um, I'd been there a couple of years. Uh, I left, went over to the General Motors dealership. And what they told me, the two owners, what they told me is like, geez, I really wish we would have known this because we were kind of grooming you to be the manager here. (laughs) right? What could have been solved? I mean, communication the whole time, let me know, share a plan, share the ideas. I wouldn't have gone looking, but instead there was absolutely no communication. I had no intention of staying if it was going to remain like that. Operators, owners, please hear this. Communicate with your people. Have an open, honest, right? uh, Place of communication where you can actually build trust, with your team, your staff, your, your you know your cohort of people there. Communication will build that and really trust, developing a genuine level of trust is our fourth point here. I would say that's absolutely critical. Your thoughts, Mick? Yeah, absolutely. Having that level of trust, trusting them with the information uh, that where you hold their future and being able to provide that feedback and trusting that they'll do the right thing with that. It, that genuine level of trust is critical um, to create a culture of success as the leaders if you cannot trust your team or build that culture of trust you will struggle to motivate anyone to any great yeah. heights yeah it is yeah. absolutely the cornerstone i'm sure we've all been in a business where the leader or the owner doesn't trust anyone nobody wants to be there everybody's complaining everybody's trying to watch their own back everyone's looking out for their own interests because they don't feel safe yep. when you create that genuine culture of trust you don't worry about the small things because you feel safe, you feel trusted, you feel valued. And that's when you can take things to the next level and focus on the really important things. Um, you know, and, and that's, and you trust that they've got your best interests at heart. So you know that they're going to do the right thing. You, you don't have to worry about protecting your own all the time because you have that genuine culture of trust. Yeah. Yeah. It's critical. And, and when you, as an employee, When you as an employee believe that you can trust your teammates, when you can trust everything that's going on around you, you can trust that the information you're sharing, should it be something in confidence, that it is shared in confidence. When you build that level of trust, it lasts. Mm. It's something that lasts and it creates that amazing team culture, right? Uh, You know, someone sharing something and then, you know, the boss going and beaking off and sharing it with a bunch of other people. That's a surefire recipe for disaster. Right? We need to create that sense of trust. Your, your workplace, look, many of us, 
Right? Many of us spend more time at work than we do with our partner. Take sleeping out of the equation. Just take sleeping out of the equation for a minute. Many of us spend more time you know, in our place of employment, in our place of work and all that. Doesn't it make sense that we are able to come there, that we can feel safe, that we can feel secure, and that we can have that level of trust with all of our people? If the trust isn't there, if there's people, uh, you know, including managers, including leaders, Right. If that trust isn't there, if there's someone who's continually breaking that trust and those people have to go because that will not sustain your business. If you've got a manager, you know, that's kind of picking favorites and stuff like that, that's creating an unfair or a biased company culture. Those people have to go. Yes. Mentor them. Absolutely. We're going to mentor them. We're going to train them. We're going to give them everything I got. And if it continues, what do we have to do? We have to help them find another position. Right. That's my kind way of saying fire their ass. <laughs> that's not that's not going to work right we have to we have to create that absolute culture of having the trust because when people trust people want to stay people want to be a part of it right Absolutely. mentoring i touched on mentoring yeah uh look ha encouraging people helping them grow through their career journey mentoring them to for their pro uh for their progress we all know that progress is the secret to happiness people are the happiest when they're moving forward um so your team needs to be progressing they need to grow as a person as a in their career and you do that through mentoring through training through having a career path for them as a leader your number one one of your number one jobs is to have a future to paint a future for everyone in your team because if they can't see a future in your business mm -hmm. they won't be putting the effort in to get there if they can't see the future of your company so not only are you painting the future for them but you paint the future of the business you talk about your mission and purpose and where you're going and then the next part of that is where do they fit into that where's their role to play in this journey where do they see their progression because if they're not moving forward they're moving backwards and we don't want people in our business moving backwards we want everyone moving forwards towards the mission and purpose Absolutely. and that involves growth and mentoring and like you say, not everybody's perfect and there'll be areas where someone will need mentoring, whether it's in their communication style, whether it's in technical aspects of their role, they'll need some mentoring. And that's our job as leaders, as business owners, is to provide that mentoring. Yeah, yeah. One of the single most impactful things that you can do is provide mentoring. If it's not you, if it's, if it's someone else, do that. Now, please hear this. Please hear this because this is really important. Training, training is only going to get you so far. But guess what happens when that trainer that, that trainer leaves out the door, right? Training has been found. It does help. But on average, people are seeing about a 40 to 42% increase in overall you know, productivity, efficient, uh, efficiency, all those sort of things with training alone. It's when you couple training with mentoring to be able to have that resource, to have those people that are there, to be able to truly help people implement this. I mean, Mick, you and I, we can go on here. We can train a bunch of things, but mm. if there are no strategies, if there's no follow-up, if there's really no mentoring behind what we're doing, some people are going to get it. Some people aren't. Mentoring is the key that holds it all together. Mentoring is really what makes it all stick and truly makes the biggest impact. That's why, you know, myself, I really focus on the mentoring aspect. Sure. I've, mm. I've got training programs. Mick, you've got training programs. We both got amazing training programs. But here's the thing, it's so much more than that. There's hundreds of thousands of people offering courses, offering all this sort of stuff. And I'm not poo-pooing courses. I've got courses myself. Mick, you've got courses yourself. But here's the thing, when you couple that with an actual mentoring, someone there to you know take your proverbial hand and help you, and to help you implement, to help you put this into your life, everything absolutely changes it. You know, if, if, if we were live, if we were on stage right now and talking to an audience, I would ask them, you know, with a show of hands, how many people have taken a course or taken a program? Yes, you have. Great, great, great. Now, how many of you remember? How many of you retain that? And how many of you went on to implement those pieces that you learned? I bet you'd see about half, even less than half. Right now, if you were to introduce that mentorship piece and there's some accountability with it, there's all that. When you introduce that into the mix, success radically increases. Invest in that for your team. Have something that people can strive forward. 
Um, mm. This ties in. I've worked with a lot of people when they're looking to hire people. Uh, we've come up with some pretty amazing descriptions and stuff. And it's not your not your mom's or you're not your dad's job description. It's quite a bit different than that. But one of the big things I said, what do you really have to offer them? Well, we've got a wage. We can pay them $15, $20 an hour, whatever it is. And I said, like, no, it's not about the wage. What's more? Right? People want more. You're going to provide mentorship. You're going to pro provide support. You're going to provide training. You're going to provide benefits. You're going to provide uh, team building exercises. <laughs> when you put all this stuff in there, but more specifically the mentorship piece, that is what's going to get people to stay. And that's what's going to differentiate you. You as the employer, oh, well, this guy's just going to pay me 15 bucks plus tips or 20 bucks plus tips. Whereas these people here, yeah, they still might be paying $15. And we'll talk about wage in a bit. We still might be you know, paying me $15 or $20, but they're going to invest in me. They're going to show me how to do it. They're going to give me training. They're going to give me all that. Young people these days, what do they want? They want the training and they want the mentorship to truly help them grow. Yeah, absolutely, Jamie. And money is the, from a long-term perspective, it's the least effective motivator. Money yep. might work great in a short-term circumstance, but over the long-term, money is the least effective motivator, the least effective tool for engaging people in your company and your culture. And like you mentioned, wages, that's great. You want people to be, um, provide good wages, perfect, because you want mm -hmm. people to have some financial security and mm -hmm. everyone's got to pay a mortgage, you know, not everybody, but we've got to pay mortgages and we've got families to provide for and all the rest of it. And that's great. We need to, but that's, that should not be the biggest motivator because if that is, you will have huge staff turnover yep. because they will always be chasing the next biggest dollar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And let's face it as wage rises, as companies get more desperate for people, they'll jack the wages up. So mm -hmm. that person who's on 35 bucks an hour with you, someone's offering 37 across the street, they yep. walk across the road. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I, I remember working up in the, uh, you know, in the oil sands in northern Alberta and and quite literally at the time, I mean, minimum wage was, I don't know, $10 or something like that. So that, you know, that was the minimum wage. These, you know, these restaurants and stuff in there, because Fort McMurray is a very oil, very mining type town and all that. You're seeing that regular $10 an hour job go for $15 or $18 an hour. Jobs like McDonald's. Jobs at like the fast food restaurants, and all, they're paying almost double minimum wage because, you know, they needed it. It just came down to the pricing. Now, McDonald's, I don't ever want to poo-poo McDonald's because they've actually got a really amazing training program. Um, mm. McDonald's, I would never, I, I, I would never dismiss that because their, their training program is one of the, the, the top ones in the world. They do some pretty amazing training if you're willing to really look at that management path and all that. So, yeah, yeah wage, it's not about the wage. It's about providing extra added massive value and where can you do that as an employer go ahead oh sorry sorry and that yeah. ties into the next point is yeah. give them the tools to feel valued make sure they feel valued providing mentoring letting them know that you're investing in them makes them feel valuable as a person having a career path for them makes them know you've thought about where their future lies and makes them feel valued but mm -hmm. give them the tools to feel valued you know Everyone has a different way of feeling valued. Some people like feedback, or others prefer rewards, other, but get to know your team, work out what drives them, what specific goals or milestones in their job role and how you can utilize their values so that whatever you provide makes them feel valued because yeah. it's our values that make our feel make make us feel valued. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can implement the strategies that we need to make them feel valued and give them the tools, whether it's a reward system, like you say, or whether it's, um, the feedback and, and mm -hmm. people, young people today, they like to know feedback. There's nothing worse mm -hmm. than them. I've, I've come across this hundreds of times in business is you go to talk to a person uh, with disciplinary action because of some unacceptable behavior that's been passed up the line to me. And I go and sit down with them and say, look, this behavior has come to my attention, uh, A, B and C. What? This is the first I've heard of it. What, what do you mean I'm getting a written warning for this? I've never, no one's even said anything to me mm -hmm. about this before. No one's given them any feedback. They've saw the unacceptable behavior. They've complained about it. They've complained about it. And after that one sit down of giving them feedback about the unacceptable behavior, it changes instantly mm -hmm. because they like feedback. Young people love feedback. And if they're not getting it, they won't move forward. No one's going to change anything if they're unaware of it. So feedback is critical in that making them feel valued because it lets them know two things. One, that you'll care about them, that you want to give them feedback to improve. Mm -hmm. And two, it takes time to it's you sit down and build that relationship with them. Yep. 
about their values, you sitting with them, giving them feedback, having conversations which can lead to their future and wherever things are heading for them. So feedback is absolutely critical to make a make a team member feel valued. Big time. If, if, if you're not giving feedback, if you're not actively involved and sharing, and it, it's the good and, I don't even want to say bad, good and opportunity for improvement. Let's call it that. Good, <laughs> great, and opportunity for improvement because there's no bad. Right. If we don't see it as bad, if we simply see it as everything is an opportunity for improvement, oh my God, we can't lose. Right. We simply can't lose. And that's a great thing right there. But really seriously, when you tell me, when you interact with me, if Mick, if you're my boss, you know what, and you have a great open dialogue with me and you're able to share those things, share those thoughts, even when I make those mistakes, even when I arrive at some unexpected outcomes, we'll call them, even if I arrive there. It's quite literally like, okay, you know, let's let's do a little debrief on that. Let's understand what happened. Let's understand how we arrived at this outcome. But most importantly, what we're going to do about it, what we're going to do about it, what systems, what processes that we're going to put in place to be able to ensure that this doesn't happen again. If I'm just getting away with stuff, if I'm, you know, doing things that maybe even I know are a little bit shady, but I'm just going ahead and doing them anyways. It's like, ah, no one's noticing. Nobody gives a shit. And when nobody gives a shit, that's the worst thing because those people, they don't stay, right? You're creating a culture of, well, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Someone, you know, someone else who's been working hard, who's been doing this, they see, you know, Sally Slacker over there, you know, no disrespect to any Sally's out there, but they see Sally Slacker over there, you know, doing whatever they're doing. They're continuously busting their butt and there's no difference between Sally Slacker or this. That's not going to show that person that they're valued in any way, shape or form. Right, it's really truly not communication, feedback, all that information. That is what truly provides that massive value. It's connection, right? Again, it's that it's that it's it's that piece of connection. It's mm -hmm. also that human need of significance. When you share value with me, you know, good or opportunity for improvement. When you share that with me, you're noticing me. You're seeing me. Oh my God, I'm someone. I'm not just someone you don't give a shit about that you're gonna you know sweep into the corner. You actually care about me because you've taken the time to, you know, to, to, to give me something, to share these things with me. And I get to grow. Look at that. Three human needs, three human needs met right there at a very high level, which is going to enable me to actually do a job better to create that amazing raving fan culture. Because, Hey, I, I, I mean something, right? I, I, I'm someone, I'm, I mean something on the team. Next point. The, yeah, go ahead. Point. Yep. I was going to say, in the anticipus, the anticipus of that, the opposite, yep, was a fairly big word. Um, yep. If you do something wrong in the business, you know something that is not aligned with the culture, and nobody notices. Mm -hmm. Opposite of that is, it doesn't meet any of those needs. Well, look, I can stuff up, and nobody even notices. Yep, I'm I'm unimportant. I've got no opportunity for growth, and that spiral is the opposite. So it's critical that you give that feedback. Because, mm -hmm. like you say, it meets those human needs. The next point, yeah, yeah, that definitely. Slide in is variety. So having that conversation, that connectedness, you know what makes people tick. You know what helps to drive them. You know what they what's important to them. So you can give them variety. Sometimes yeah. tasks in business they might be repetitive because mm -hmm. they're the same thing over and over and over. But getting variety in your work really, really stimulates uh, engagement in the task or in where they're coming to work because we've all been in a role where you go to work and it's the same shit. It's like Groundhog Day. If anyone hasn't seen that movie, <laughs> yes, exactly. over and over and over again. Yeah. We've all been in roles like that. But having some variety, it's probably been one of the um, one of the most important in my in my career is having variety because nothing's ever the same or you do things differently or you're in a different job or a different project. It's having variety and having the ability in your company to be able to provide variety for your team is yeah. critical for them feeling valued and being engaged and staying engaged. Yeah. 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 It's also extremely critical for the longevity of your business. What do you mean, Jamie? Longevity of my business. Think about this. We've got Bill and Bill is the, you know, the guy that does this job, job X, whatever job X is. And Bill's doing job X, job X, job X. All of a sudden one day, no one comes to work. Bill doesn't come to work for whatever reason. We don't know why. Right. No one else knows how to do job X. What's that going to do for your business? Think of it as cross training, right? Yeah. You, your business is going to tank. Be okay to cross train. People want to learn things. Again, it's that human need of growth, 
right? Be okay to shit. Now, granted, right? You're not going to take, um, you know, you Pete here. Pete's just come on and, you know, Pete's, you know, responsible for our mail room and you're not going to stick him as your CFO. Obviously, I'm not talking about that kind of variety, right? That's just, that's, that's not going to work very good for your business. But really, we want to begin to utilize that principle of cross-training as well. So say that someone is gone, say that someone doesn't show up. Number one, your business is going to still be able to operate. It's like, oh yeah, hey, Pete, you know, you can fill in for Bill because Bill didn't show up here today. No problem. What's great about that though, too, is now I've got that variety. Now I'm not stuck putting widget A onto bolt B. That's all I do. Widget A, bolt B, widget A, right? I'm going to get burnt out. I'm not going to really enjoy that. Instead, provide some variety. Look at different areas, different things that people can do. Like, like get creative, cross train. It's ultimately going to serve your business for a long time. And, and when you bring a different set of eyes in, I've, I've seen this as the business owner, business operator myself. Sometimes it takes someone from outside that doesn't know exactly how to do that task to unlock those opportunities of how to do it even better. Yeah, absolutely. Having that other set of eyes, doing that cross training, that refines a role, that refines processes. That that's critical in your um, your, your can I your constant, never ending improvement. You're finding ways to just tweak that a little bit, and and it takes that. Sometimes it takes that second set of eyes from somebody else who doesn't normally do that role to ask a question and say, "Why does that happen like that?" Oh, that's just how we do it. I don't know. Oh, okay, that's strange. Wouldn't it be easier to do it this way? Oh crap! Yes, it would be. Let's do that. Yeah. And you can tweak a process or change something that in that role to make it more efficient, make it better, make a better customer outcome, mm-hmm. uh, which is where we're, where we're aiming for in all of our interactions is to have a better customer outcome, have a better process for them. You know, it's variety for the, the team. It keeps them engaged, excited. And like you said, that cross training, it helps with the sustainability of your company to, to make sure you're there for the long term. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not taking advantage of that, if you're not in injecting that variety into your business, you're really missing out on a great opportunity. Right? Look for those opportunities. Look for those opportunities to be able to switch things around. Maybe that's even part of the game. Maybe there's a position that's really desired. Remember the play piece. Remember the number one piece that we talked about here is have some fun, inject some play. Right? Maybe there's a really great task. Maybe there's something that's just a whole lot of fun that a lot of people want to do. Maybe we can make that a little bit of a game that based on productivity or whatever it is, when that person does really great, they get the opportunity to step into that role. Maybe it is CEO for a day. Maybe maybe it's something like that. Right? We can really enjoy what we're doing. We can provide the variety. We can do a whole bunch of things. But most importantly, we're going to get massive gains as business operators and business owners when we get that new, fresh set of eyes on it. That's a big one. Transparency. Being transparent. My God. Um, that's another big one. Uh, these companies out there that are just so uh, closed-minded and closed off when it comes to sharing information about the business. If I'm an employee... And I really have no clue about what's going on because it's some secret squirrel stuff. Now, no, I don't. I don't expect to be if I'm if I'm new. I don't expect to be looking at the the P and L statements and this and that. I don't expect to be going there. But I'll tell you what: if I really understand, you know, what we're all about, what we're doing, what's going on, what our plans are, I get to really feel like I'm a part of that team. I get to feel included, and inclusivity. People want to be included. I mean. Look, look at what's happened here. We've been so segregated. You know, we, we've gone through this pandemic and everything. People are just hungry, absolutely, totally hungry to reconnect, to be a part of something bigger, to, you know, hopefully get back to, God, there's just so many cliches, the new normal, this and that, but get back to some state of being able to truly connect, to be involved. Transparency yeah. comes in that. If you're on a team where, you know, things are changing, things are moving forward. We've got some new COVID protocols or whatever it is, and that's not being communicated out. Someone goes and does something, all of a sudden they get reprimanded for not doing it right. When that communication wasn't there, we didn't have that transparency on it. We're missing out on a massive, massive, massive opportunity. Myself, I had the opportunity to crew with uh, Kerwin. Uh, and it was just, it, it was an amazing, amazing experience there. And we actually got to have our own little experience behind the event. It was really cool. I'm not going to give what, out all the details or anything like that. But what was amazing about it was the level of transparency. I, I felt like family. I felt like even though I was just, I was volunteering my time, I wanted to give back. 
even though I was just really, I was just some guy. I'm just some guy. I'm here, you know, donating my time crewing. But when I was there, I, I swear to God, it's like I was working for the guy. It's like I was a part of the team. And what made me feel that way was the radical level of transparency of the information and how they shared it. That just blew my mind. Yeah. Having that transparency, Jamie, is is absolutely critical because we've all engaged with someone and you say, oh, what's happening with um, the D section of your business? Oh, I don't know. If, yeah, that, that don't work for me. I wouldn't have a clue what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Oh, I heard this. You know, having that transparency, you know, cross departments, what's happening in other areas of your business? What's the sales team doing? What's the, mm -hmm. what's the, you know, the parts department doing? What's the Sparky department doing? Yep. Having that transparency across the business so that someone goes out and I bump into Jamie, who's a client, and say, oh, what's happening in the Sparky team? Oh, they've got some new exciting stuff going on. A, B, and C, and D. Yeah, they're really, really crushing it over there. Things are going well. Oh, that's awesome. What are you up to? You know, and then having that transparency about what's going on in different departments instead of keeping it all closed. No, that's our department. Get out. We, this is our secret. You know, we're going to, mm -hmm. this is our success. You can't share in that. Like having that transparency throughout the business about what's going on, because it's nothing worse when someone comes to you and says, oh, what's happening here? You're like, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Well, oh, what's going on? It straight away demotivates people yeah. because you've, you've all been in those situations and all been in the other situation where someone's talking excitedly about what's happening in their business and there. And it's because there's transparency about what's going on, where things are happening, what's working, what are they doing? What are they working on? Different projects that are coming up. Having that level of transparency in, in the construction business, what are we tendering on? What projects are we tendering on? Someone says, oh, have you heard this new big project coming up? Oh yeah, we're ten our uh, building departments tendering on that. You know, having this sort of stuff communicated out, having that transparency, it's not a secret. Yeah, maybe not share your price with the whole world, but be transparent about what's going on in your business, what you're working on, what what things are happening. And that really creates a level of excitement and engagement yes. about opportunity in your business because the minute people know there's opportunity, they want to be involved. Yeah. And I've seen this hundreds and hundreds of times. You're working on a project, people hear about it, they come up, hey, I hear you working on this project. Are you chasing any blokes for that? They want to be a part of it. You know, we're talking about attracting and retaining staff. We're being transparent about what's going on in our business and the opportunities that are out there. People are going to want to be a part of your business, especially in, you know, um, in the construction industry, trade sectors. When people hear about a new project or hear about something cool going on, it starts to talk. And then people say, oh, what's going on? Oh, you're looking for any blokes for that? You know, and you start having conversation. And then, but this is the whole purpose is to attract people. So we need to be transparent with what's going on in our business and what opportunities we're working on. Yeah, yeah. These ideas, these thoughts, and I mean, we've got so much more, but we're kind of coming to the end of our time here. Really look at it from this perspective. What, what have we talked a lot about today? We've talked a lot about providing a disproportionate amount of value to your team members. This is what it is. You know what? We didn't talk about wage. Right, we, we touched on wage slightly, but you'll notice it wasn't just about giving a person more money. There's tons of different things. There's tons of different areas in which you can make tweaks into your business to both retain and attract these new staff members. When you've created something that's truly unique from all the rest, when you get to stand out from everything else that's out there, when you get to be known as, oh my God, that's the place where you want to go work. Let's face it, again, the Google thing, right? I, I don't want to go work for anyone, but hell, I'd be curious to go work there for a day just to see what it's about, just because I've seen so much of it. That's what you get to create when you start within first, when you begin to really change the way you do things, when you recognize the value of those team members and you practice even a little bit of what mm. we've shared with you here today. It, it is completely, entirely going to change the game. Mick, final thoughts. Yeah, look, absolutely. And the... We touched on so much here and ultimately what we want is we want people to be wanting to work for us, to be lining up, to applying. Hey, have you got any jobs available at the moment? I really want to work for your company. But let's face it, that's not where we're all starting at. That's the end game. So you're not probably, the reality is you're not going to have people lining up like that. But get these things right. Do the culture. Create a, a, a genuine trust. Build these relationships. Give feedback. Work on mentoring and growth and create opportunities. And that'll create that culture of internal raving fans which will spread throughout the community throughout your networks and then people will want to so that you know this is where we start 
implement these things, create that internal raving fan culture, and the end game is you'll have people lining up to work with you. But the reality is for now, we're gonna start with this internal raving fan culture. That's the secret to attracting and retaining staff, retaining talent and team members. Yeah, no question whatsoever. Look, we hope you've enjoyed the show today. It's a blast sharing this out there. Unfortunately, we didn't get to cover all 13 topics. Maybe that's what part two is. Maybe next week is part two, or maybe we'll come up with something even greater to provide even more value. Again, we want to thank you for, for, for tuning in. We want to thank you for being a part of the show here. It's our pleasure to be able to serve each and every week. If you want to get more information, of course, join us on the inside. Our Facebook group is Insiders Elite Business Evolution. Look us up. You can get us on Facebook there. We'd be more more than happy to have you on the inside. Until next week, go be productive, take that massive action, but most importantly, go and do. Absolutely. Have a wonderful week. Go do, and uh, we'll see you next week.